Welcome to Food Ad, the podcast that explores the vital role food plays in the classroom. Join us as we dive into the latest research, share best practices, and hear from experts in the field. Let's work together to create a school environment where every student can thrive. Let's become food educated together. everyone and welcome to the Food Ed Podcast. I'm Svetlana Elgert, your host, and today we have with us Hilary Drinko, who is a head of school of on uh, in Claire's Montessori International Academy, as well as the CEO of Empowered Wellbeing for Success. Welcome, Hilary, and thank you so much for coming to Food Ed uh, Podcast with me today. Thank you for having me, Lana. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, it's it's very exciting to hear from you. Um, I just wanted to see if you can give us an intro on yourself, say hello to our audience, and tell us what you're currently doing. And at the end of it, tell us what your favorite food is. <laughs> All right. So currently, I'm a head of school at a small uh, Montessori school. We have about 55 students. We go from infants all the way through sixth grade. And I spent 18 years of my 30-some year career in, in a classroom. So I have not, not just been admi an administrator. I'm also, uh, you know, I'm a, a qualified Montessori teacher. Uh, uh, primary level, which is two and a half through six, and then elementary, which is up through sixth grade. So that then got me into um, administration work. And, and while I was doing all of that type of work, I kind of burned myself out. And I ended up looking at how I could balance this career with, um, you know, healthy lifestyle and mind body and started off actually uh, taking a course in the from the Institute of Integrative Nutrition. So I'm a holistic health coach first and then continued on with yoga and Ayurveda and uh, all kinds of training in mind body systems now. So bringing that all together, my personal business, Empowered Wellbeing for Success, really looks at not only the mind and the body from an emotional perspective, but also from a physiological perspective. So uh, quite a bit of emphasis on, you know, food, which speaks uh, speaks to, to your situation. And then also in schools, uh, Montessori schools, and I know, Lana, you said your children went to a Montessori school, you've experienced Montessori schools, we tend to have a very holistic approach uh, to, well, we have a holistic approach to education, and that includes food. So at our school, there are no sugar, uh, no sugar allowed. We are also a nut-free facility because of the so, so many children with nut allergies. But because of all of that, I started looking at um, integrating what I had learned other than, you know, my experience as a Montessori educator and administrator, how I could marry the two um, and bring it into, into a school situation. So um, that's, that's what I've been doing since about 2018, very half-heartedly. So I'm retiring full-time um, at, at the end of this month and working for the school part-time, but then also going to help um, bring in mine. I know your focus, Lana, is very much the food aspect, right? Um, I also look at the uh, more of the mental health because there's a lot of my training. I started off with an undergrad in psych. Um, so I, but food is, food and mood, as you well know, play an yes. enormous role. Yes. <laughs> And that's where yes. the two marry, right? Yes. For, for schools. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's so. very re it's very related. Food is very related mm -hmm. to mood. Food yep. is very related to physical activities. Food is very related to learning, to well being. So, yep. you you are doing fantastic. You're you know that's that's wonderful. Um, what is your favorite food? Favorite food, I think I would say. Uh, something like an Indian curry, a vegan Indian curry. I am vegan. Oh, you are uh, vegan. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm vegan. Yeah. Uh, I'm more identifier. I mean, I'm, you know, generalized, you would call me vegan, but I'm definitely look at plant-based nutritarian approach, uh, mm -hmm. to, to eating. So, uh, nutrient dense foods. I don't eat, um, manufactured foods. 
I so think nothing that, out I, of a box. Yeah. Very good. I, you know what? If I had to sum that up, I think that if we would have one rule, nothing out of a box, that would be good. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, that that yeah. will take care of a lot of the issues that we have, correct? <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, Lana, I, I just watched a, a summit and there were 45 medical practitioners, you know, allopathic trained, Western trained doctors. Mm -hmm. um, and every single thing came back down to if, you know, just if you could boil it down to the essence, can we just not put everything in a box and can we just take it from the earth and, and you know, then we might, sure, sure. we'll change, we'll change health care. Yes. Yeah. Well, of course, what, what you're saying is, can we start eating real food? Can we start yep. eating the Please. real food? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. It's, Please. It's, Let's. Yeah. It, it seems very simplistic. Um, and I think it's a very simplistic approach and probably the best one. But I think because there is so much that we have made for ourselves, you know, fast mm -hmm. foods, box foods, you know, people don't want to cook, don't have time to cook busy lives we have pushed back on that and we brought kind you know it's kind of something we brought on ourselves and now we want to go back to the roots to the basics right that's kind of where where we are um so tell me a little bit about the empowered well-being for success what what is that so it encompasses right now um it encompasses i actually have a subsection of that called the sanity club and it's a little club i have actually not even marketed this yet most of my faculty are, are part of the club and anybody who knows me gets you know will join and this is very much looking at all aspects of how to balance find homeostasis, right? Our cells are always working towards homeostasis to balance. And as such, so we do as well emotionally and socially and physically, right? All of these components. So uh, I bring every month, I bring a new topic to the table, but mm -hmm. I am a yoga, I'm trained yoga teacher. I have several certifications in yoga. So I Oftentimes we'll bring, actually, you got me in my yoga clothes. I taught yoga today at the school. You look great. Uh, you look great. <laughs> thank you. Um, but uh, so I'm, I know the impact on trying to balance the impact of, you know, the physical activity um, and also bringing some of the quieter physical activity that influences uh, vagal tone. Um, I don't know if, if, if you know anything about the vagus nerve, but that's a very big love of mine is this new research on the vagus nerve and how it impacts emotional and social well-being. And in a Montessori uh, curriculum, as you may well know, Lana, we work very much from the basis of that social emotional learning Correct. that then brings about the cognitive or academic uh, prowess, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, the latest scientific research proves this as well, and they're talking about it more and more. But what I noticed was, you know, and why I started the Empowered Wellbeing for Success um, business was that a lot of people want to do something but don't know how to distill all the information out there. And so uh, I became an Ayurvedic practitioner just as, a, as something that I found fascinating. And for my capstone project, the doctor in charge said, this needs to go into schools. Why don't you write a curriculum? You are a curriculum writer, write a curriculum. And uh, so I did. So now I'm, mark I'm just beginning to market it to particularly Montessori schools right now, because that's my expertise, but I'd love for it, you know, to go into many schools um, and really look at, at how we can combine mindfulness, breathing techniques, yoga, uh, the concept of food. I look at it from a very Ayurvedic perspective. So yes, yes. looking at it at the rhythms, you know, daily, daily routines. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the six tastes in Ayurveda. I discussed that. Uh, but it's it's a it's a program that is, can be brought into a school and just can be part of the experience of the child's day. And a regular teacher can teach it. Not just you don't just have to go and get a yoga certification because of the way that I designed it. So that's what that's all about. Well, that's that's wonderful. So in the school where you are at, is there any? Um, educational classes on food or nutrition or health or if there yeah. are how are you putting that together 
and when I say food ed, I also am speaking exactly of the same things you are. How do we combine, you know, I'm not only looking at food. I start with food because I think it's the kind of the nutrients of, you know, it's yeah. the, yeah. it's like the wellness and the problems is all right. What you just said. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what do you, do you have anything right now that you are practicing with your students at the school level right now, currently? Yeah. So at uh, we have two little two campuses. The smaller campus does not have a purpose built uh, garden, but the bigger campus, the newer campus, actually we have a lot of land and we've got working organic garden beds that each class takes care of. Uh, so at certain times of the year, we plant we start planting on Earth Day, and uh, we incorporate, in fact, the science lessons around it at that time of the year. Um, in in our Montessori school, we have a, a spiral curriculum. So every three years, where we're doing different aspects of science, biology, and but within all of that flows through. Uh, information about food uh, that doesn't just become one year or another year and it will depend on the age group of the children so we first like to get them involved in actually seeing where their food comes from um, so the younger ones you know and all of them of course but they go and plant and they get to choose and they discuss uh, why we're going to plant these plants and why we possibly wouldn't be planting this plant for whatever reason, right? And the, the, the teachers are all well-versed now. We, When we first had the school, when it first opened in this particular campus in 2010, we actually had resident farmers coming in and helping us. But they kept moving, and every, every time we found a new farmer, it was so difficult to keep going. So we ended up saying to the faculty, all right, we're all going to, you know, have a look at uh, the broad perspective of how we can help children in the gardens. So we've got the gardens, and in fact, we are planning this year to create a walking labyrinth around the heritage oak tree that is close to the gardens so that the children can go and, you know, garden um, and then walk around and have some quiet time and try and marry the both together, you know, so that they, they get this experience. Um, so from the actual food aspect, we do do nutrition. Um, it is one of our units. And, uh, and then in the biology side of things, you know, it's all to do with plants uh, whenever we're doing anything to do with plants. So we don't tend to, in Montessori, isolate topics we integrate them into sure, various, sure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in, interwoven. Sure. Yeah. So I would say, um, honestly, Ilana, there's not a very specific curriculum. Uh, each of the teachers is required, uh, they are required to let me know how they're planning, you know, whatever curriculum it is. Uh, but what we do is we do a year A, B and C. Uh, in fact, this year, I'm actually working in up leveling. That's one of the things I'm going to do in my semi retirement. I'm at, we're going to up level all the programs. Um, and nutrition is on one of them. Um, and I walk into a classroom that, and uh, if I'm watching a lunch, for example, if I'm having to cover because, you know, someone is out and, and our floater is not available and the children will often bring me their lunch packages, which are, you know, we, we have an opt in, opt out lunch program. And we, in fact, make the food fresh every single day on site. I, I have a we have a cook. So they, they get a homemade meal every every day if they choose. Uh, okay. And if they choose to bring in, I would love to say, you know, we we don't want any packaged foods, but I, I'll get mutiny on my hands. Unfortunately, I think it's sure. a slow process. Sure. But but the children will bring me in something and say, you know, what do you think about this, Miss Hillary? Um, and I have to very gently, you know, because when you can't pronounce three of the three of the words on the on the on the back of the package, right. you know, we, we have, we have a conversation, but you're trying not to, you know, undermine a parent or, uh, so it's a, it's a subtle way of working with the children when it comes to their food aspects, but they do have an awareness. We bring it in as well when we're talking about, um, environmentalism and ecology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it's mm -hmm. kind of blends in Lana. It's not one specific, uh, aspect you know, but it is, it, we, we pull the whole lot together. And Montessori, that's a very Montessori thing. This episode is brought to you by Rainbow Chefs Academy. Rainbow Chefs Academy provides turnkey nutrition and wellness training for schools, home-based and after-school programs. 
For more information, please check the link in the show notes or visit rainbowchefsacademy.com. And now, back to the show. Right. So it's like blended learning. And it's yes, like, it very it's, much it's, is. It's yeah. blended learning and it's kind of cross-subject. Yes. Um, so, yes. yes. I, I mean, that, and that's a very good way for children to learn and it that this kind of education is easier and I think better absorbed uh, by the children. So I think that's that's great. Um, yeah. What do you think about uh, obesity and diabetes rates? No. Uh, as you know, they are today because I, I know everybody knows that. What w- have you been also uh, kind of watching that really, really go up and stagger yeah. and just yeah. increase by the year? And there is like no. It's. I, I'm wondering when is it actually going to go down? When are we going to see you know, this way instead yeah. of uh, th- this way? So have what what yeah. do you think about that as a like what can we do as teachers, as educators, as a community to start offsetting that and actually making some impact where we can get that uh, to start to decrease. You know, Lana, someone asked me a question the other day. It was one of my faculty members, and she said to me, I really need to lose some weight, but I'm trying, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing that, and I made some suggestions to her, and she said, is this going to be too expensive, Miss Hillary? And that is partly a problem, right? If if it's cheaper to buy McDonald's in a food mm-hmm. desert is about the only thing you could find, possibly, and I'm, I'm not slamming McDonald's, but any fast sure, food place, sure. right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, if it's cheaper to do that, why would, you know, someone want to go and spend double on some whole food, right? It's very challenging. And I mean, we know there's food deserts, right? So if we pull all of that to one side, um, I think one of the biggest things is to just encourage the youngest children. Really, we've got to start super young. We have, uh, we, you know, we go up through sixth grade and once they hit the fourth and fifth grade, you know, just even trying to have a logical conversation because it's such an emotional thing, food, right? So if we can, if we can help the children younger and help them get excited, you know, the little ones, the green beans are now producing and they picked them and they took them to the the cook and they said could could you make these for us tomorrow could you steam these for us and they were so excited and every one of them ate these green beans and parents saying to us they would not touch them if I gave them to them right but Mm -hmm. they've seen where they've grown so if we could even encourage people to have little mini gardens in a Mm -hmm. container right any of these um types of things and I would prefer and, you know, not to get polit- political, but I would prefer that we are subsidizing whole food mm-hmm. and not industries which don't necessarily help with this. And they're calling it diabetes epidemic, right? I mean, yes. it's obesity yes. and diabetes they're yes. saying is, is this diabetes epidemic. Of course, yes. But and I, on the other hand, one of the moms, when she was speaking to me, she said to me, See, I didn't know, Hillary, that I shouldn't be giving my daughter all this food. Her blood sugar levels are too high, but she's hungry. And I said to her, okay, so crowd out. Crowd out the what I would call the processed food, right? And the the foods that don't have any fiber and whole grain, a whole fiber yes. in them that can help with reducing insulin levels and not spiking your insulin, right? Yes. Um, and I said to us, think about crowding out. Think about doing it that way and not saying you can't have. Yes. Um, so when I was trained as a, as a health coach, one of the things that we talked about was when you deprive people, they, if they're not happy about it, Lana, right? You, yes. Deprivation is not something that we enjoy as human beings. Yes. But if you can have, um, encourage a lot more of the healthy and give a little bit of what we might consider not healthy, but at least give a little bit of it, um, then eventually that person will slowly um, come over to a more um, a holistic food uh, 
preference, right? I, you change the taste buds. Yes. But I think I think we need to, you know, I, and and I think schools are a very good place. We're educating our future, right? Yes. <laughs> these are our yes. future. These children coming up. Uh, and it's the future of our world in all on all levels. You know, if we can educate really young, and I think that's the role of the early childhood centers, um, because I think as they get into elementary, they 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 they're starting to push back a little bit because they're finding their their power right, and it's don't tell me what to eat, and that's one of the things that, that parents step well, yes, back away yes. from. Yes, it's parents, it's peers, it's you know what yeah. they see, it's behavior yeah. they see at home. So it's it's almost like it's almost like what you're saying. Yes, we have to educate the kids. Yes, we have to educate the teachers that are teaching mm -hmm. the kids. Yes, mm -hmm. we have to educate the parents that are feeding the kids. So it's almost <laughs> like we have this big circle of, of things that we have do to I? do for this to come mm -hmm. together. And I I a hundred percent agree with you that I think gardening is such a big thing for kids because mm -hmm. once they understand and know where the food comes from, they will think of, how did you say that, nutrient-dense food. Yes. And yes. they will understand that that can't come from a box. I think that's yeah. one of the things we have to overcome as a community because mm -hmm. when the kids get home and they're eating things at home and then they go to the cafeteria and there is, you know, chocolate milk or oh. high sugar snacks that the school has mm -hmm. given them, it's a hard fight we're fighting, you know, because it's all around them. Absolutely. And so mm -hmm. it's like we, that's, that's the goal and that's my goal is to bring it to a point where everybody has the same goal, which is to, you know, offset diabetes and obesity and help kids grow up live in a more healthier lifestyle because as you are correct by the time they get into elementary school if there is if there is no education if there is you know no examples if nobody talks to them about the food and about the basics of health wellness and nutrition and of course and I'm talking about not only food but the the what you just said it's hard it's then it's a, it becomes a very hard thing to deal with later and when the kids to be teenager, I almost feel like it's late. That's why it is. It is. I agree you with know. you. It is too late. I actually uh, uh, worked with uh, a psychologist uh, for, for several years a while back with some of the uh, students. Uh, and uh, she said to me, I will take children up until the age of 12. And mm -hmm. after that, yes. uh, it's virtually impossible uh, to affect a change. You know, the other thing that we do, Lana, um, is we do uh, an activity called mindfulness of taste, and it's really easy to do. Um, we have snack time, you know, uh, and uh, well, or at lunchtime. It doesn't really matter when it is, but if you can uh, do it in a classroom experience, and you know, you might you might just take a, a slice of an apple, right, or yes. a slice of a peach, whatever is in season right now, and um, and it can be a, a vegetable as well. It doesn't doesn't matter, uh, and to notice to actually look at what it looks like, notice the color, notice the d discrep discrepancy between the outer skin and the inner skin, and really bringing that mindfulness attention to this particular piece of food, and then taking a small bite and being silent about it, and noticing what that tastes like. And then taking another bite and noticing, can I taste, is there skin on this? Is, is the skin, is it different? feeling in my mouth to what the flesh is and just starting to become aware of this. And um, I, I've just finished one of the cohorts for um, the beginning of my Empowered Wellbeing Success, the school curriculum series. And one of the teachers came back to me and she said, I'm doing this. They're ages uh, two and a half through six. And she said, we're having so much fun with the mindfulness of taste activity because she said they're starting to notice when they eat their food at lunchtime and they're raising their hands. This tastes like this. This is sweet, but this isn't sweet. This is salty. And this, and so now they're starting to actually not just put food in their mouths and 
t- not really take much notice of it, but actually when they put food in their mouths, they notice how it tastes, how it makes them feel. And we have a follow-up, particularly for the older children. So you might go home and you might have, I don't know, you might go, you know, grab a, a packet of crisps or, you know, g- g- chips or something and uh, eat those. And without judgment, because this is all a non-judgment zone, right? Uh, yes. Without judgment, notice how you feel, right? Notice how you feel after that. And then maybe the next day you have an apple or whatever it is, and notice how you feel after that. And do you notice if your body is sluggish after one of them in comparison to another of them or whatever the case may be and starting to help them kind of create that connection between what food can do to your mood as we discussed earlier, right? And it yes. and it really does make a difference. Yes. Well, I, I love the fact that you also pointed out, I think that's a great exercise. Um, I think for younger children, it's almost hard to put that together. But I think for children that are more, you know, like maybe first graders and up, you know, where they can already kind of feel because the little ones, it's kind of, but I think that's a great exercise. I also love the fact that you pointed out on seasonal cooking. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big education piece that we have to do because, and, and continue showing And that has to do with gardening. It has to do with weather, with sun, you know, how that, how does this vegetables or fruit grow, right? What are the seasons? Because I think eating seasonally right away means that you're eating healthfully because if you're Mm -hmm. eating seasonally, right? I think that that has already really left our society as a whole for for whatever reason because people are used to, having bananas and strawberries 12 months a year right Mm -hmm. i am you know i I am originally from ukraine and i very distinctly if there is anything i remember i remember seasonality there was no way you were gonna get you know pomegranate in the middle of the winter for example or or or, you know they just don't it doesn't matter which store you would go to they don't exist And I think that, you know, so it's here, I I think we have whatever we want, anytime we want. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like in one place, there's none of it. And here we have too much of it. So I think that educating uh, children on seasonal cooking and seasonal eating is key, whether it's school and parents. And even, you know, I wish marketing techniques were were like that, you know, <laughs> eat, you know, hey, you know, cherries are in season now. And, you know, people start thinking about that it's in season instead of going and getting them when they're not because they taste different, right? They don't taste quite. They absolutely quiet, taste different. Right? Mm-hmm. And your body yep. also is used to processing. It's like, you know, lights and sun. I mean, everything has to kind of make sense. So I, I love that, uh, that you are so aware of that and completely, of course, you completely understand what we need to do. Now all we have to do is, <laughs> is line it's, up and, and do it, right? Yeah, yeah. And, I, and that's why, I mean, you know, I know you, you work with schools as well. So that's why, you know, trying to, trying to start it at what I feel is the grassroots side yes. of things, right, which is in education and really making it a really critical part of a child's day because yes. we know that if that malnourishment does leads to cognitive impair and as such you know how do we empower children if they are not being nourished appropriately and something out of the box generally isn't nourishing them to the level that something that is you know derived from the land can do so yes absolutely, uh, absolutely. and i think that's I, and I think as well, you know, we're fortunate, right? Montessori environments. Um, we, you know, when you when when you're in a, a private Montessori school, you are not you're not governed by anything other than authentic Montessori practices, and that gives us a lot of leeway uh, within, obviously, our, our curricula. But it gives us a lot of leeway from that perspective of this is a really important topic right now. It's topical. We need to talk about it. We need to put more yes. emphasis on it, and we can. Um, and I think a more responsive uh, way of educating children would be more successful in us being able to do this 
in all school systems. Uh, I think, you know, it, it, that's the it dream. Really, <laughs> Hillary, oh, wouldn't that's, it be? <laughs> that's the dream. I, I mean, you know, my, my dream, and I think that, you know, I, I feel it's really the only way to make this go across all the way is that health, wellness, and nutrition, and I mean every aspect of it. I don't mm -hmm. only mean food. I feel right. that should be a subject just like math and science and reading. It's just Absolutely. as important as a subject as all mm -hmm. of those. I wish it was part I almost, you know, I I want I would like it to be part of the core curriculum because I think that's what you need as a child to leave a, a healthy life. Uh, that's the education that a child should receive together with the math and English and writing because it's extremely important. It's how do you take good care of yourselves? What what are the basics of, you know, health, wellness, and nutrition, seasonal eating, you know, healthy cooking, all of that. I, I, I think that the lack of knowledge has brought us where we are today and lack of education. So, uh, you know, yeah. if yeah. we can, that would be, that would be the, the, the dream for us, right, Hillary? <laughs> Just bliss, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. you know, yeah, and 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 to have young people grow up feeling healthy and well, yes. right? Not yes. not not. Uh, someone said to me the other day, "I've never, I'm, I'm always tired," and I went, "Gosh, okay, let's have a conversation about this because I'm never tired." You know, I get up at 4 a.m. in the morning. I do all kinds of things so that I can come to work, you know, at 7.30. But I, I have a morning routine. And I know that's extreme. I, I get that, Lana, right? That's a choice I make. But I'm, I'm, I'm still outpacing my 20-year-old staff, you know, and I'm 64 and a half. And I'm like, come on, people. You know, you, you've got a long life ahead of you. Let's, let's right, get these right. bodies functioning because right. our bodies are actually really miraculous, Yes, uh, you know when you start. If you to feed study. them good, right? If you give <laughs> yes. them water and a, and, and a, mm -hmm. how did you say that nutrient based foods? I think that they're yeah. happy, right? Yeah, so. really, and they do their own thing. You know, yes. as long as we, as long as you know, we we take care of our cars for the most part better than we take care of the body, and the body is meant to be with us. You know, for we were hoping for quite some long time. Yes, right? yes, yes. And you know what, that is, that's a great comparison, Hillary. I love that. We, we, <laughs> you're right. I, now that I think about it, you're absolutely right. We take better care of our cars. We do the oil change before it yes. breaks down, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, yes. I think that that's, that's a wonderful, <laughs> um, I, I think that's wonderful that you have the knowledge, the leadership. Um, and I think that uh, today kind of our podcast kind of shows, you know, people and educators and parents that we're all trying to get to that successful place mm -hmm. with the children mm -hmm. because children is our community. Parents is our mm -hmm. community, you know, mm -hmm. so ed the educational piece is big. Um, it's a big undertaking. I, I know, and it's very rounded. Uh, but I think yeah. that with people like yourself, we will get there. I am. I am enthused about what you said, and I think it's wonderful. Um, Thank you. I would, uh, you know, I so enjoyed our conversation. I'm going to send you as a thank you for being on the podcast. I'm going to send you our. Um, uh, backpack that has all the tools that you need. It's for the kids. And it's a backpack that has everything that a child needs to do a healthy meal for themselves anywhere they are. So oh, I will fantastic. send that to you. So Thank I want you. you to, I want you to take a look. Yes. Thank you. And then um, I'd love to keep in touch with you and, yeah. um, you know, check in and have you back on the podcast. But I think that's um, wonderful what you said, the mind-body connection and the garden is essential for the mm -hmm. lives of the mm -hmm. kids. And I think as early starting early is key. It's really yep. starting young. If we can just start young with all the kids coming into kindergarten, coming into a school setting, I think we will start seeing success. And that's my hope and dream that together with people like you, <laughs> we can make that happen. <laughs> so I appreciate your time so much. 
Um, I very much enjoyed our conversation and we will be in touch, you and I. And um, I thank you again. Thank you so much. It has thank been you, delightful, Lana. delightful talking to thank you. you. Thank you. And thank you for your gift as well. Thank you. <sighs> My pleasure. Thank you. Take care. We'll Bye talk for soon. Now. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform and on YouTube. Let's work together to create a school environment where every student can thrive while becoming food educated together. We will see you next week on Food Ed.